Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Justin. Good morning, body of Christ. It is a beautiful Sunday morning. We are here, and we are here to worship the risen Lord. We're coming off the weekend of Easter, where we talked about the power of the resurrection. And today, I want to go right from there to where we are and follow off, follow up with right where we left off. For we're going to be in John again. We're going to be in John chapter 21. Last week we were in John 20. We're going to be in John chapter 21. So I encourage you to turn there with me in your Bible. As you turn there, I want to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And I also would like to ask you to like, comment, and share on this post so you can help us spread the gospel throughout social media and Facebook. Also, if you're interested, you can tune into our website at www.meadowland.live where you can see past sermons and find out information about the church. Now, with everything going on right now, the calendar's kind of not working because we don't know when we're going to be able to meet in person again. But if you want to bookmark that page on your computer, check back with us and it'll let you know everything that's going on here at Meadowland. Today I want to talk to you about, do you love me? This is a common uh, uh, conversation that's talked about in Scripture between Jesus and Peter. But before we get to that, I kind of want to set the scene, set the scenario of what's going on in John chapter 21. In verse 20 we had learned about how Jesus was revealing himself, his risen self, to his disciples on more than one occasion. And he had been around his disciples. Thomas wasn't there, so he wanted to see. About a week later, he revealed himself to his disciples again, and Thomas was there. And he got to see the marks. And because of that, he believed. And Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen and will still believe. The disciples are still hanging out. They're waiting in a room, waiting for what's going on, what to be instructed to do next. And at some point, they grow weary and say, I'm going fishing. And the others say, I'll go with you. And so they get up and they go back to what they did before Jesus called. Now, this is something that we all can relate to. Those of us who have been called by God, who have answered the call of God, who have been touched, sanctified, and set apart by His blood and atoned for it, we are saved. And Jesus called us from what we were doing and to what He would have us to do. He called us from the life we wanted to live into the life He's calling all of us as believers and disciples to live. When things weren't going the disciples' way, they decided they'd go back and do what they used to do, which was fish. They're on the sea. They're fishing. They've fished all night. They've not caught anything. And then Jesus yells at them from the, from the shore and says, Have you any fish? They say no. He says, cast your net on the right side. And they begin to cast their nets, and they have so many fish that they cannot even pull the net into the boat. They realize that it's Jesus. Jesus tells them to come ashore, have breakfast with him by the sea. They not only get over to the sea, they don't know that it's Jesus. They're afraid to ask because they knew it was him. They may not have recognized him in the way they were expecting but there he sat with a fire and fish and bread, ready to meet their needs. And I'm going to go ahead and be really honest with you right now. I don't know where that fire came from. I don't know where that fish came from. And I don't know where that bread came from. But what I do know is this. It's the same Jesus who called these disciples, who called these apostles, met their need in the beginning, and he was still meeting their needs to this day. They had fish, and they had loaves, and they broke bread together. And he told them, bring some of the fish from your recent catch. And there they said, they were provided a physical meal because they were hungry. They had toiled all night and had caught nothing. It encourages me to know that anything that I do on my own without the Lord will never come to fruition to produce anything that will last. But everything I do in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will always be eternal because it's for the kingdom of God. You see, Jesus was the same to them then as He was now. From the beginning and now. Do you remember how He first encountered His disciples? Yes, that's right. He asked to borrow a boat 
and told them to push out a little further into the deeper end. And they had once been fishing and caught nothing. And that same day, he told them to let their nets down in the deep water. And they caught an enormous amount of fish, so many that other helpers and boats had to come in to help them drag them to shore. You see, the recognizing of Jesus is that He works in the ways that He called you. It's unmistakable, the voice of Jesus. It's unmistakable that what Jesus does and how He uses these events to call us closer to Him and not further away. He had been resurrected. They had seen Him twice before. This was their third encounter. And even though they had seen Him, they were still unsure about what was going to happen. And He was calling them back in to His purpose. Providing for them and putting them at peace. Let's pick up right after breakfast, right after the fishes, right after the loaves. They're sitting around the fire. And let's pick up in John chapter 21, starting with verse 15. It says, So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lamb. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes. Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and you walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying what death. He would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Let's pray. Father, as we get into your word, get into us. Show us, teach us, shape us, form us, and lead us. In your name, amen. Peter had denied Christ. He was the loud-mouthed disciple who always had something to say about every situation. He was loud. He was proud. He wanted people to know that he followed Jesus. He wanted to know that he was somewhat kind of in charge. He was in the top three. And he was one of those people to let you know real quick who he was. But see, his mouth had got him into trouble here recently. He had professed his love for Christ. He had professed his commitment to Christ only to come down when the times got in trouble he refused Christ he rejected Christ he did not want others to know that he was with Christ as they led Jesus away the disciples scattered and not one of them showed up to the crucifixion except John Peter had followed at a distance as they led him away and three different times in that one night Jesus had told him, you will deny me three times before the rooster crows. And Peter had said, I'll never leave you, even unto the death. It didn't even take that much. When they took Jesus, they all scattered, Peter especially. And three times that night, he had denied Christ. Sometimes our mouth gets us into trouble because we commit to things verbally that we've never committed to in spirit. And you can't convince your spirit to commit to something, that is the power and the grace of God. If He calls you, if you exchange your spirit for His spirit, He will lead you exactly where you need to be, what you need to be doing. And in all things, God will be glorified in it. We can set our calendars. We can put notes in our phones. We can put in there that I'm going to read the Bible this amount each day at this time each day. I'm going to pray this amount each day at this time each day. You can commit to do a lot of things in the flesh and by the word of mouth. But let me tell you something, boys and girls, children of all ages, adults who grew up in churches. I have seen many a people commit to things with their mouth that they have never committed to in their heart. And because they have never committed in their heart and spirit, it is a tiresome deed 
because they struggle with it. When you fall in love with Jesus Christ, when you truly love God, you will seek His Word. Not as a chore, not as a command, but a civic duty in following Him because you hunger and thirst after His Word and after His Spirit. You'll not only want to read, you won't want to put it down. You'll not only read what the Word says, you'll allow the Spirit to open it up to you and you'll start living like the Word. I want to encourage you. What Jesus was doing here was going to restore Peter. And Peter did not yet understand. Jesus was asking a simple, straightforward question. Do you love me more than these? These could have been several things. It could have been the other disciples. It could have been the fishing and the boats. That's what Jesus had called them from. Do you love me more than these? All of these things, these distractions, all of these things that will call you by name to return to them when I'm not around or you think that I'm not around or you can't physically see me. Would you go back to what I called you from rather than just following me? I'm sure in Peter's mind he thought that Jesus was bringing up the fact that he had denied him. And maybe he was. But he said, Lord, you know that I love you. Did you know that you can love somebody, but that doesn't mean that you're going to listen to them? Let's be honest. What Jesus was asking Peter was simply this. Do you love me enough to obey me? Love and obedience need to go hand in hand. And if we're going to profess our love for God, His Son, and the Holy Spirit, we need to be obedient to what He calls us to do. Not being satisfied with the first answer, Jesus asked Him again, Peter, do you love me? He answers him and says, You know that I love you. He says, Tend my sheep. And the third time he asked Peter, it says, Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, Do you love me? I love how it says that Peter said, Lord, you know all things. When we get to the point in our life when we realize that Jesus already knows our motives, our circumstances, and our decisions are not based on what we say, but are based on what we do. We can profess a lot of love and commitment and dedication to the Lord, but our lives will prove who we're truly following, the Savior or ourselves. I want to ask you something. Have you been living a life being brought up in church, and that's what you're committed to is, church rather than the Christ. There's a lot of that going on out there. I don't just mean the body of Christ, I mean the building itself, the programs, everything that goes and does for every time we meet and everything that goes on here. You're dedicated more to church and tradition than you are the Christ who died for us, the God who sent Him, and the Holy Spirit who empowers us. Now is a good time to come clean with God. Because Jesus tells us if we love Him, we will be obedient to Him. And three different times He says, feed my sheep, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. So we see the importance of following Christ as what? To feed the sheep. The sheep are called of God. They know the shepherd's voice. They hear the voice of the shepherd and know He is good. And they follow Him. He sometimes refers to them as lambs. The lambs will follow the shepherds. So what Jesus does with his disciples, what Jesus does with his apostles, is he calls them to be shepherds also, tending to flocks. How many people do you come in contact with outside of church that God has put in your path that you could be a spiritual influence on, a biblical influence on, that you could truly love and shape them the way Christ has loved and shaped you, and you could be a disciple maker. You could be a fisher of men a fisher of women, a fisher of children. But he points out that fishing is a great point. Fishing and the catching, that is great. That is given of God. But after they are caught, what do we do then? There are so many people who have gone to church their whole life, yet they know nothing about the Bible. They know nothing about true salvation. They know nothing about true discipleship. And they know nothing about following Christ, no matter what. church body. It's time that we take care of the sheep. 
feed the sheep, tend the sheep, feed the sheep. Understand this principle. Too many times the church has tried to feed goats instead of feeding sheep. We have somehow taken the word of God and said we need to help the world. Yes, we do. But what has happened is we as the church has leaned over so far to help the world that we've actually fell into the world rather than helping the world out of itself. We've got to a point where we feel like we need to entertain the masses so that we can bring a majority in so that somehow, somehow, because we have so many that we would be powerful. Power does not come by number. Power comes from God alone and His Spirit. You can do more with 12 dedicated followers of Christ than you can do with 1,200 or 12,000. Twelve disciples saw the risen Christ and everything that He had proclaimed to them come true and they remembered His words. And they not only followed Him, they went out and spread the gospel. They were out feeding sheep and not goats. And you know what? When they would go into a city, it would change things. And when two of them would go into the city, it would literally turn it upside down. Twelve dedicated people committed to loving God so much that they would obey Him and let the Spirit lead them in what they would do, that they were going out and feeding sheep. Church people, we've got to stop feeding goats. It's not about bringing people in by a method or by a program. We're not here to entertain the masses. We are here to send out and spread the truth. And the truth can sometimes be a harsh word to swallow. The truth will always sting first. But it has healing after the stinging. And the healing is what we need as sinners. Jesus held no punches with Peter. He didn't say these things to embarrass him. He said these things to restore him. He said, Lord, you know all things. And Jesus did. It wasn't what Peter was going to say with his mouth or what he had professed before. He knew that he had failed. He knew that he had fallen. And what Jesus was doing was giving him another chance. How many of you out there right now listening to this message are glad that God is a second chance kind of God? That Jesus is a third, fourth, fifth, sixth chance kind of God? About a thousand chance, God. If you look at me, I need His forgiveness daily. I fail. I fail. But what we cannot fail at is we've got to see that God calls those with His voice. We can shout all we want to, but we've got to stop entertaining goats and we've got to start feeding sheep. We've got to start tending lambs. And what we have to do is we have to build up the body through edification and through the education of the Word, and let the Holy Spirit do the work. Do you know that more and more people that I've come in contact with over the years who've attended church most of their life know very little about the Bible? What a lot of people have learned about the Bible is what someone has told them. They don't know where to find it themselves. They don't know where it's written, who wrote it, why, what's it talking about, what it's referring to, and that falls on us. As church members, we should not only know the Word of God, we should be in the Word of God daily. We should be learning from it. We should be sharing from it. And the way that we do that is we apply it to our life. You know, the Word of God tells us that we should write this on our heart. We should know it. We're sometimes going to make false claims about how we'll never do this and never do that. Let me tell you something. I'm one of the first people that when all this pandemic started going on, I said there's no way that I'll shut down church. Within a week... We shut it down. Because it has to be more about the others than it does self. And if we're going to love people, we can use any platform and any media to get the Word of God out. And what we're doing is we're casting out. We're feeding sheep. And if you're a sheep, you'll take it. If you're a goat, you'll have none of it. The last thing the church needs is a bunch of fat goats because we fed the goats and not the sheep. What empowers the flock is the feeding of the sheep and the tending of the lambs through the good shepherd and his voice. And it comes from his word, it comes from his spirit, and it comes from praising his holy name. Dedication to God will come far more than your verbal commitment. It will come because you fall so in love with Jesus that you love him enough to obey him. This journey for the disciples after this breakfast by the sea would change everything. It goes on that Jesus tells Peter, he said, you know, right now you go where you want to, you walk where you want to, you dress how you want to, you gird how you want to, but there's going to come a time later on where someone will lead you where you don't want to go and will gird you in a place you don't want to be girded. It refers to how Peter would die a martyr for Jesus. 
tells us that Peter was crucified upside down. He not only committed to following Jesus, he took the words, follow me, serious. He followed him even unto death, and that death brought him to eternal life. A lot of problems we have in, in the church today in the body of Christ is that we profess a commitment with our mouth. We profess a devotion with our mouth that we never truly mean with our heart. We never truly feel in our spirit. And so we tire, we exhaust, and we're rapidly looking for something else to take that place. Something else to fill that void. And we get so caught up in it that we choose the world rather than the one who created it. We feel empty. We feel frustrated feel let down. We feel broken. There's only one thing I know that has taken my brokenness and healed it and made me whole. There's only one person I know that took my sin and forgave me for it and empowered me to rise up and be built and start over fresh and clean and anew. His name is Jesus. I would have never thought of myself as a sheep. I would have never thought of myself as a lamb. I would definitely be a goat. But somehow the shepherd saw fit for me to hear his voice. And I am so glad he called my name. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Most of us would say that or claim that, that we're ready to go wherever God calls us to go. But the truth is we can't even get in God's Word and He calls us there every day. We can't even get into prayer and He calls us to prayer daily. We can't even get into church weekly. Let me ask you this. Do you love him enough to obey him? And do you love him enough to follow him? Listen to this in verse 20. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, which is John, following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one that betrays you? This identifies that Peter turned around and saw John, who was close enough to hear this conversation, this interaction between Jesus and Peter. And Peter, seeing him in verse 21, says, But Lord, what about this man? What about him? Isn't that just like the church today? We are more apt, brother, than to look at ourselves when Jesus is talking to us, to be convicted, to be repetitive, to be able to change, and to be able to confess and focus on what Jesus is saying to us. We would rather point out the flaws and shortcomings of other people or wonder what's going to happen to them because somehow, no matter how wrong we've done, we somehow feel that we're far better off than other people. Well, I'm not like this man. I'm not like this one. That's exactly what Peter was trying to do. He wanted to divert the attention off him. He wanted to find out. He wanted to know more. We want to know about others rather than we do ourselves. When you get one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ, listen to me, people. When you get one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ, I promise you, he will reveal to you more about yourself than you ever wanted to bring up. And what he reveals about you shows our true character, that we somehow have been professing to be sheep and lambs, but we've been acting like a bunch of goats. Jesus answers him and says, What if I will that he remain till I come? What is that to you? You follow me. I love how Jesus addresses this. What business of somebody else's does that have to do with you and me? I'm talking to you. This is Jesus and Peter. Two words. Follow me. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't turn around. Don't start looking at other people. Follow me. Follow me with everything you've got. Be all in. Don't be a lukewarm Christian. Be all in or not at all. We see the struggles in the church today come from people following pastors and people following programs rather than people following Jesus. When you follow Jesus, it doesn't matter who's in the pulpit. When you follow Jesus, it doesn't matter who's in charge of the programs. It doesn't matter what's going on because you are so Christ-led that you will have discernment to know truth from a lie. And you will have discernment to know what food is for sheep and what is for goat. And you will not be built on seeking sand. You will be built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and nothing else. And you will be so dedicated to loving Christ that you will follow Him even if it causes you to be led to your death. Stop worrying about others. Start focus on your calling. If he has called you, you know his voice. Will you respond? Have you responded? 
Has it been a while since you've responded to His voice? Has it been a while since you've gone to Him in prayer? Has it been a while since you've been in His Word? And has it been a while since you could be called His sheep? Do you love me? Lord, you know all things. Feed my sheep. Tend my lambs. Feed my sheep. Three times he says it. And for all three times are the three times that Peter denied him. Jesus not only restored him, he empowered him. And he encouraged him. Do not lose focus. Do not look at the world. Look unto me. No matter what goes on around you, don't take your eyes off me. It reminds me of the old hymn we used to sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Amen? Amen. Pray with me. Father God, I pray for all sheep and all lambs that they would hear your voice today. That the church would take it serious and stop trying to grow full of goats and only focus on the flock. We are here for the believers as well as the unbeliever. Let them hear the gospel. But let us never change our message to take in goats. Let us feed sheep and let us tend lambs. Let our focus be between you and us. Let us seek you daily in prayer. Seek you daily in your word. And let us not do just a commitment with our mouth. Let us love you enough that we would obey you with two words that say, follow me. Lord, may we be found doing that. Lord, never let us return to the very things you called us from. If we've been set free, then remind us, you are the Son, and whom the Son sets free is free indeed. May we never return to the sins of the past. Let us focus on the Savior of the now and the future. I pray for churches everywhere in this time, everywhere they meet in your name, for everywhere a message is going out, Lord, may it have full of your grace and full of your seasoning and full of your spirit that it would be received and lives would be changed. For the lost, that today would be the day of salvation. And Lord, today be the broken healed in your name. For the sick to lean on you. For those who are in doubt, they would lean on you even harder, Lord. Because you are the God of the mountain, the God of the valley, the God of the sun, and the God of the storm. You are in it all, you are through it all, and you are above all. Two words, follow me, you say. And we say, yes, we will, until we understand how hard it truly is. Let us never forget it comes at a price, and that is the loss of our life, so that we can be empowered by you. May we no longer live, but you live in us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I want to thank you all for joining us with, it, with us today. Like, share, comment. Help us get the word out. You know, sooner or later this is going to be over, and I am so excited about what's going to happen when the church comes back together. We're already making preparations now. I hope that you will be excited to be called of God, to share in His sufferings and His experience and in His glory. Never be ashamed to share the gospel. Take this time that we are down to get in the Word, to learn more about the Word, so that you can give testimony and point into Scripture where Jesus has said these things and God has commanded these things and the Holy Spirit is alive in this. I want to thank you all for those who have been sending in your donations, your tithes and offerings. Feel free to keep mailing those in at 1188 Detroit Road, right here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, 42101. We've had people take advantage of our online giving also. They'll share the link in the, link in the comments. It'll take you right to our online donations page. Once again, if you want to check us out, we're at www.meadowland.live. And that will take you to our homepage and our website. It tells you information about the church. You can click on media and it will take you to our YouTube channel where all of our past sermons are on there as well. If today has touched you in some way, I want to say God be glory and all of those things. But if you're going through something right now, something that you're struggling with and you want to talk, we're here for you. Reach out, private message me. You can message the church or you can get on my, my own Facebook page and message me. I'd love to talk with you. I'd love to pray with you. If you're struggling right now and you have concerns or questions about the Word of God, reach out to me. Let me help you. I'm here for you. 
If you are here and you've never been saved and you feel that Jesus Christ is calling you by name and you want to know what that entails, reach out to me. I'm here for you. That's what I'm here to do. I am just a beggar who knows where to get some bread. Understand that concept. It's so simple. I'm just like you. I'm no greater. I met a Savior who changed it all. And I can't testify to myself, but I cannot stop testifying about what He's done for me and continues to do for me. And I just want to introduce you. I can't save you, but Jesus Christ can. So if you're struggling today, reach out. If you're praiseworthy and you're on top of the mountain, reach out too. Encourage me with your praise. I need it too. Let's all get to the point where we cast our troubles on Him. Let us go forward in victory because Christ has already won. Amen? Amen. Thank you all for watching. Tune in tonight at 5 o'clock. We're going to talk about what home church looks like and how the first church started out in homes. And we have an opportunity to do that every day with our families, friends, and neighbors. So join us tonight at 5 o'clock, Wednesdays at 6. And like always, reach out, speak out, live out. Amen. God bless. Have a great day.